Luke. So I say some. Luke chapter one. Verse six will start in. And they both and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. That is Zacharias and Elizabeth. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. We talked about that. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God, in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. All right. There is much. We left off in these 23rd, 23 words of this little verse. You don't think there's much there, but there are. In the custom, it says, the custom of the priest's office, Exodus 10.1. Exodus 10.1. What was the custom? Exodus 10.1. The Lord said to Moses, Go. Exodus 10. Well, that's a wrong one. That's an error. Let me check Leviticus. That's a boo-boo. Yep. I'm allowed to make mistakes. For all have sinned and come to shore the glory of God. Nope. Deuteronomy. Well, I guess this is a boo boo. Try Deuteronomy 10. Oh. 10. Nope. That's a that's an error. Aaron the high priest was to trim the lamps and burn the incense along with his sons. Only we've gone through this before in previous verses, only the priests were to be inside that building. No one else. In the first place in the New Testament. Hebrews 9.1 Hebrews 9.1 We see an incense altar. Mark this verse right here. It's wrong. Yeah. Hebrews 9.1 Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine sentence and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle. All right, so we are in the law. In Exodus, you read about the tabernacle. You read about the law beginning in Exodus 20. The tabernacle made the first. This is the holy place. Wherein was the candlestick? That's described in Exodus. And the table, described in Exodus. And the showbread, which was on the table, lined up six and six, 66 books, which is called the sanctuary. This is where Zacharias is right now in Luke 1. He can turn around and see the table, and he can turn around and see the candlestick. Matter of fact, the candlestick is giving him light in the room. If there was no candlestick there, there'd be no light. Now, in verse 3, there's something particular here. There's something weird. And after the second veil... You walk in a holy place, you go through a veil. 
There's a table. There's a candlestick. In front of your face is another veil. You don't go past that other veil. You don't go peeking behind the veil. You die. Only the high priest was to go in there once a year, twice on that day, for his sin and for the sin of the people. No one else. So Zacharias is to stop at that veil. When you read the Bible and you study this tabernacle, it is so. Exactly how it's, but that incense altar in the Old Testament is in the holy place. Proper. Okay. Verse 3. After, and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, the most holy place, which had the golden censer, and the Ark of the Covenant, overlaid round about with gold where it was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant according to Hebrews 9 that altar was in the most holy place the tabernacle is divided into two rooms the holy place the veil and then the most holy place Now, the high priest, before he went in the Day of Atonement into that veil, opened that veil and walked into the most holy place, he was to burn incense so the cloud of incense, the smoke up, would go over the tabernacle, would go over the mercy seat, would go over the cherubim. And in Hebrews 9, that says that that incense altar was in the most holy place. But the Old Testament it says it was right where the holy place. I don't know how to explain that. But unless it was two parts. There was the altar itself and then there was the, the incense pot. Because there was an incense pot. So, seeing what Hebrews says, in the holy place there's a candlestick, there's a table of showbread, we're looking at a minute, then there's the veil, the most holy place, there's the Ark of the, the, Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. <clears throat> Let's look at Exodus 30, verse 22, and hope this one's right. Exodus 30. Verse 22. So we're going to get in with a little study of the tabernacle. Exodus 30, verse 22. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices, of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, it would be, so it would be 250, even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of sanctuary, and of oil, olive, in a, and hen. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound, after the ark of the apocryphary. It shall be a, ho a holy anointing oil. Okay? This is the anointment that is used for anointing. The spices thereof. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation thereof, and the ark of the testimony, the, the table, and his vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, 
and the altar of incense. Well, look, wait, look, look. Thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation with the ark of the testimony. Okay, there it is in the most holy place. The table. Well, we read that was in the holy place. And his vessels. The candlestick. And his vessels. And the altar of incense, that is where Zacharias is. Hebrews writes that that altar of incense is But if you go back to Hebrews chapter 9 and read that altar of incense had to be up against near the veil. It was touching the veil. And yet it it pictures prayer. Exodus 26:33 Exodus 26:33 Exodus 26, 33. And we'll start in verse 31. Thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet, and fine twine linen of cunning work, with cherubims shall it be made. So, you can have a decoration. You just don't worship it. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood overlaid with gold. Their hook shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tatches that thou mayest bring in thither within the veil, the ark of the testimony. So you bring the ark through this veil. And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. Thou shalt set the table without the veil on the other side of the most holy place. The candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. And thou shalt put the table on the north side. And we haven't read the incense altar. So when you walk in this room that goes from east to west, you are standing in the room. If you are looking towards the mercy seat, which is the veil, you can't see it, but you're looking towards the mercy seat, the candlestick will be on your left. The table will be on your right. In front of you is the veil. And up against that would be the incense altar. So Zacharias is right in the middle of this room. To the left he's got the light. To the right he's got the bread. And in front of him he's got the prayer and the veil between him and God. Exodus 40, 23. Exodus 40, 23. So we're getting a little tabernacle study here. And we'll start in verse 20. And he took and put the testimony into the ark. And set the staves on the ark. And put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle. And set up the veil of the covering. So he walks into the most holy place. He sets down the ark. Then he puts up that veil. This is the veil that Jesus rents. This is the veil that only the high priest was to walk through. And set up the veil of the covering, verse 21, and covered the ark of the testimony as the Lord commanded Moses. Now he's in the most now he's in the holy place. And he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the side of the tabernacle northward, without the veil. That veil was a center marking spot in that tabernacle. 
It is not on the holy, most holy place. It's in the holy spot. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord. Before the Lord means here he is. He's standing in a room right before God. The only thing is standing between him and God is that veil. That altar incense in Hebrews nine says it, it was in the it was beyond the veil. Yet we find it in the holy place. It mentioned the veil, then it said the altar of incense. We'll read on. And he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table. Over against the table means on the other side of the table. The south side. On the side of the tabernacle southward. He, lit, he lighted the lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense. This is exactly what Zacharias is doing. And he set up the hanging of the door of the tower. That's the outer veil. So there's something about that altar incense. It's in the holy place, but it's also in the most holy place. But we know by the law, we know by the writings that there was no one to be on the other side of that veil, but once a year, the high priest. But that altar that Zacharias is standing at, has a position in the holy place and the most holy place. So if Zacharias is the burnt incense, what he was doing back in Luke chapter 1, in verse 9 says, According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was the burnt incense. So we are in the holy place. To the left of him is the candlestick. To the right of him is the bread. Now that pure candlestick used, I'm trying to say the Bible word, it's hard to put, oil, olive. Now when I stock shells, I, there's times I had to stock olive oil. You know, they would get it wrong. And the bottle says extremely flammable. Now, I don't know if olive oil gives off a scent when it's burned, especially as a candle. I don't know. I never smelt it. But imagine he's got, if there's a smell to that, and then he's got that bread over there on the table. Imagine what that room would smell like. And now he's going to burn incense. Pure, holy incense. He's in the same room, the holy place, where the candlestick and the table show bread and the altar incense is. The beginning of Luke's gospel, we are in the temple, in the holy place. How's that for a start? The only person that we read in the Old Testament that went into the altar of incense, and I think we're going to talk about him maybe, maybe not, was one of the kings of Judah, and he went in there to burn incense, and he came out a leper. Because he did not belong in it. The guy had great intentions, but he was not allowed in there. So here we are. We start off with Luke chapter 1. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. His wife was the daughters of Aaron. So we are in a priest class now family. And her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. They were, they were the right ones, the right stuff. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. We are now in the heritage of Abraham and Sarah. We are Jewish flavoring. We are kosher. 
And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Here we are. We are standing in the temple. Luke is writing to Theo Pius, whatever his name is, a Greek. Luke chapter 1 verse 3 and he brings the medical doctor brings his writing into the temple you wonder if that angered some Jews how dare you bring that Greek that 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 dog into our temple Luke is opening the door listen Luke was written after Christ died after after the death burial resurrection of the gospel Luke writes his story and guess what Bring this Greek into the holy place. And when at the at the time that Luke is writing, that veil was rent. Or had been rent if they didn't sew it back. Since the veil is rent, Mr. Theopolis, come on in. Step through the veil. Woo wee. Just look at verse 4 about that thou mayest know certainly those things with wherein thou hast been instructed. Theophilus, whatever his name is, he'll smack me in the face when I get to heaven. Yeah, probably not. If he's a brother and he's to love me and I'm to love him. Is brought in to where no Jew was allowed to go. But of the priest. Mr. Theophilus, walk in. You see where Zacharias was? Let me take you even further. Okay. And the only place, only, only the priests were permitted there. Look at verse 51. Chapter 1, verse 51. And I don't know where I'm getting these verses. They're not. 151, Luke 151. They're making probably made mistakes here. Well, that's another bad one. Boy, that's two tonight. That's two tonight, bad one. But we studied. That's not even verse 15. Oh, uh, verse 5. Well, that's two bad ones for tonight. Okay, now, move on. Only priests were be permitted there. We talked about that last time. Morning or evening. Now there was a sacrifice of a lamb in the morning. There was a sacrifice of a lamb at evening. Was the burning of the incense. So Luke 1 9 is either in the morning or it's in the evening. 50 50. Exodus 30 34. Let's hope I got this one right. Exodus 30 34. Exodus 30, 34, about this incense. Exodus 30, 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, Sakaki, Sak, Staki, and Annika, and Galbenum. These sweet spices with pure frankincense. Of each shall there be a like weight. <coughs> In other words, you take them all the same amount of weight. And it doesn't give you the weight. Only Moses knew. And the priest. And thou shalt make a perfume, a confection, after the ark of the apothecary. Now that, that guy would be your druggist, the old-fashioned druggist that would make your. You know, he didn't pour pills. The apothecary didn't pour pills from one bottle to another. He would. If you went in there with with a prescription to make for aspirin. He would make the aspirin right there in front of you. 
His job is to meet all the spices and whatever needs to be meet together with what was needed. Tempered together, pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it very small and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet with thee. It shall be unto you most holy. And as for the perfume, so whatever this stuff is, it's most holy. As for the perfume which thou shalt make, ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Whosoever shall make like unto that, the smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people. That meant for a Jew to go to hell. What you just read, what the incense was to be. The incense is described as most holy. And when Zacharias or any priest that were to go in and burn that, that, that incense, he would come out smelling like it, but you were not to make any composition thereof, or you would die and go to hell. In other words, any priest, Zacharias, could not give you the secrets, could not tell you, verse 34. Do you know in verse 34 you can read what the, how to make the stuff? And I bet you the Jews could not ever know what verse 34 was. But here you are in 2014 reading what they were not supposed to make. We could take all these spices together, mix them all together, and we have the most holy compound. But that incense is a type of prayer and praise that only those who know God, only those who have gone through the veil into the most holy place, only those who have been to the mercy seat of God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, only we know what true prayer is. And we're seeing it in Zacharias in Luke chapter 1. Don't you see the New Testament, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, a Greek? Here we are. We are in the holy place. There's no fear. There's no veil mentioned. You got to go read the scripture with scripture. You got to study to show thyself approved unto God. But in Luke, there is no veil. And he's offering a prayer. Verse 10. And the whole multitude of people were praying without, outside, at the time of incense. There's a time for prayer. The people are praying. The incense goes up before God. It is a time of prayer, and it is seen in the incense. Scripture is Scripture. Revelation 8.3. There is a specific time, morning and evening, and all day long. Revelation 8.3, scripture with scripture. And another angel came. Who's Zachariah, who's Zachariah is going to run into next? Are you telling me so far we're only 10 verses in the Luke that, that Luke just sat down one day and wrote a fairy tale about the Lord Jesus Christ? He's not even Jewish. Are you telling me there is no inspiration of Luke through the Holy Spirit to write down what he wrote in 10 verses already? Scripture was Revelation hasn't even been written yet. 
And look at the cross reference. Another angel came out and stood at the altar. All right? Having a golden censer. That is the other part of the incense altar. That's that thing. If you go to Roman Catholic churches, it's on chains and it's a bowl and they swing. And when they used to do that Catholic church, I start sneezing every time they did that. Serious. But don't you see the Roman Catholic Church bringing you into the Old Testament? Tell me where the church is, is to have a golden censer with incense in it. Show me. Now, in fact, I was so worried about these verses one time. I went to my pastor. Pastor, is it okay for us to burn incense? He said, yeah, I mean, they're good smelling. I mean, if you do it for an odor of the house, yeah, that's okay. There are people who do it for incense worship of, of their fallen gods. That's wrong. There are people who burn incense to, to, to cover the fact is they're, they're smoking things they're not supposed to be smoking. Do you know what the what what the what uh, Exodus called it? Didn't it call it a perfume? There are some people who put perfume on to cover what they're not supposed to be doing. Jezebel painted her face. That's something else. Golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense. What do you think it was made of? Scripture was scripture. Read back Exodus 30. That he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. What was going on in, in Zacharias in Luke chapter 1? What's going on outside? Exactly what you find in Luke chapter 1.10. It's found in Revelation 8.3. There's a golden censer. There's incense. There's an angel. And then there's people praying. The golden altar, which was before, <laughs> before the what? Exactly what Hebrews 9 said. There is something weird about that incense altar. Because the law tells us it's on the other side of hell. This side of Calvary, it has gone before God. There's the incense altar. There's the, the, the censer. There's the incense. There's an angel that has it, but it's Zachariah. And there are people that are praying. We're Luke 10. Look at Revelation 5 8. Three times is a charm, isn't it? Revelation 5 8 and when he had taken the book the four beasts and four and twenty four elders fell down before the lamb capital L there's the Lord Jesus Christ we just read in 8 3 before the throne God's throne now here's the lamb having every one of them hearts and Revelation 5 8. Golden vials. Here's called a vial. Maybe a vial is a censer and a censer is a vial. Maybe. Or maybe it's just a different instrument. But a golden vial full of odors. Now it's not the incense, it's odors. The aroma, the smell. Which are the prayers of saint luke 1 in the nose of god think about god's holy nose our prayers should be like the incense and it is to be made like Exodus 30, 34 through 39. That if anybody tries to pray an artificial prayer, that it is to be, you're going to hell. Don't you try to imitate a prayer of a saint. 
When these religions pray their prayers, they, it makes God sick. It makes him close his nose. He does not like it. He only wants the prayer of the saints. And it's not a bunch of dead people. So throw the Catholic Church out in verse number 8. Scripture with Scripture, a saint in the Bible is one that's still alive. And that person holds a vial in his hand of aroma that is pleasing to the nose of God. I wonder if your prayer, give me, give me, give me, God, your, here's my spiritual quarter. I'll put it in the gumball machine and I'll get what I want out of it. I want that is sweet and pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. I don't think so. But God does want you to tell him what, his, what, what you want, what you need. You ask not because you, because you, ask, you didn't ask him. You didn't get it. Or you asked to miss. James talks about prayer. In the holy place. Now let's see. Back to Luke 1. Let's see what Zacharias sees in the temple. In the holy place. He walks up. There's the, prayer, there's the incense. That's prayer. Your prayer will get you into the holy place, through the veil. What do you mean? Your prayer life is the next thing you, you are before you get to God. All right, let, let's take it like this. You walk in a room. Here you are. You walk through the outer veil. You're in the holy place. You need to see the, the light. That's the candlestick. Jesus is the light, John chapter 1. I think he had a nail in his left hand. All right. He looked to the right. There's a table of bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. There's a nail in the right hand. <laughs> Look at that. And before him, before the veil, is the incense altar. Didn't, they, didn't Moses tell them on the Passover night there to put that blood on three places? On the sides of the door, one and two, and above the door? Pictures the light, the bread, and the prayer. Listen, Jesus is praying for us today, the Bible records. The Holy Spirit is growing for us, the Bible records. That bread is laid out six and six, 66 books that we have in our Bible. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God. How's that? If you don't have Christ, you don't have no light. You're in darkness, John chapter 3. And then once you have the word, once you have the light, you have received Christ, now you've got prayer. You've got true, sincere prayer. The only prayer that God acknowledges. You know, you've already been through hell, the altar, the brazen altar outside. You saw you were going to hell. And then you were washed. So the first thing you do after salvation is you get baptized as a public view of all of what you've done. It's not salvation. It's a testimony. And then you walk into the holy place where Zacharias is. There's the light. There's the bread. There's the prayer. And then you don't have no veil in your way. You walk right into the veil because it's been rent. And there you are, Paul says, seated in heavenly places. Now, you weren't sitting in the mercy seat, but you could sit right down there before the ark and have sweet fellowship with the Lord. Now we got all that. You wait next time, Lord willing. What else happens in that holy place? The next event. We've already done a, a, a short study and we've had some errors with, with scripture and I apologize for that but we have done a short 
tabernacle study on location. And the inspiration of Luke that he has by the Holy Spirit to bring this Greek in. You didn't realize that, that he brought a Greek in. That was not a priest. That was not of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Levi. <laughs> and here he brought him in. Do you know what you do when you witness to somebody and you properly show them the gospel and they properly receive Christ in their heart? You know what you do? You bring them into the tabernacle. You bring them to the brazen altar. You bring them to the water of washing. You bring them in through the first veil and show them the Bible. And probably you may buy them a Bible. You show them the light of Jesus Christ. They have already prayed and begin a prayer life because they asked Christ to save them. And now you bring them all the way in through where the veil was, that it was veiled to all the world and all the Jews, that no one could go in there but one man. Now you bring them into holy seated places. Look at that. And that's exactly what Luke did for this Greek guy. He brought him right on through. Luke is going to be a great, interesting study as we continue. We've only done 10 verses. And look where we've been so far. I mean, what was a television to go nowhere? Listen, we've gone, we've gone no, how can I say it for, we have been to places where no Jew has been. If I was an artist, I could draw, if I was an artist, I could draw what no Jew has ever seen, but the priest. It's amazing what the Holy Spirit has showed us, has gifted us, has given us, if we read and study his word. 